Welcome to a new video in my SAP GUI scripting series. Um, with this video, actually I'm moving away from SAP uh, GUI scripting because there is another way to interact with SAP from, uh, from an external application, which is called um, SAP functions. Um, sometimes it's also refers to, uh, referred as BAP scripting, but just by looking at Google's, there are more hits for SAP functions. So I think I should go with that as well. And basically what this does is if you have a function module or a BAPI, which um, is RFC enabled, for example, if we take this one, RFC underscore get underscore table underscore entries. Um, so if you go into the, um, uh, well, actually not here, but if I go into the test uh, test tool that you can see that this is like an RFC enabled um, uh, function module. And with the SAP functions, you can call this function module from an outside system. And um, in I'm going to be using SAP, uh, sorry, Microsoft Excel and the Visual Basic as the as the external system because uh, uh, probably that would be the easiest to <clears throat> to do uh, without developing a user interface in a native application. So you will be able to access call this function module and then able to interact with SAP. So in this particular examples, I would be using this to get um, <clears throat> the values of an SAP table or the entries in an SAP table. But um, there are a lot other trend, lots more, you know, function modules that we that you can use for um, to to do uh, various things in SAP. And if you launch the transaction BAPI, then you see all the different BAPIs that SAP is providing for the same purpose. So if I just go, you know, under sales and distribution and sales, and then with sales orders, you can see that you can get, um, there are a few BAPIs which allow you to change sales orders, create sales orders, get status of the sales orders, or get the list of sales orders. <coughs> and they can all be used uh, with this SAP function. So again, if I just open one and I go into the test tool, then uh, you see it's, uh, it again has this RFC target system. Um, I would like to make a note saying that I am not an, S, uh, an ABAP developer. I understand a little bit of ABAP, but uh, um, I, I didn't do any development in, uh, in SAP. So most of the things are going to be focused on Visual Basic, obviously. Um, uh, so I just have a layman's term in, in ABAP and the, you know, some of the development side of SAP. So if my terminology is not precise, just uh, uh, um, I'm sorry for that. What I'm going to do in this particular example, I'm going to call this uh, function. Uh, let me just go back. Sorry, SE38 RF. I hate this thing in, uh, in this new GUI that comes up with this stupid thing. Anyway, okay, back on the table, and I want to get a the content of a table. So in the test function, I can say that okay, my table name is this one. So I put the table name in, I click on execute, and I get a few um, stuff back from SAP. So I can see that there are a number of entries. So I have uh, 103 items in this table, and in this, um, so that's in the export parameters, and in the tables, which is also part of the, let's say, response or the result of this uh, function module, I'm actually getting a list of entries, which, um, uh, I mean, it's a really simple structure because it only has one field. So, and there is one item for every single um, uh, record in the table. Um, and I think this should be good enough for um, an example, just to talk about the basics. And um, uh, just to recap on the on, on the function module itself, uh, as you can see, you have importing parameters. So these are different filters or any any of the data that you are sending into the function module. And when you execute, you are getting export parameters, which are which would be either individual values or that can be like structures as well. And then sometimes you have tables which are also returned, which in this case, the entries, but these could be any results or status messages or the different structures of a sales order when we talk about sales orders. When we come to SA, uh, the the Excel side of the um, the process, 
I just created this sim simple Excel file, so I just put the table name here. I will click on, this, on the Start Script button, which uh, is going to call SAP, and it's going to call this um, uh, test function, or sorry, this uh, function module, and, and return the, basically dump the entries here in, in Excel into column D. Before I go any further, I wanted to have a few words about uh, uh, the, the GUI scripting versus the SAP functions. And just probably to summarize, well, that, that's, that's how I understand it. But you would use SAP, um, uh, the GUI scripting, if you want to develop something really quickly, because I think with the script recording and the playback, it's much easier to create something. And then if you want to use something a little bit more elaborate, and for example, you don't want the user to see what is happening in the system, um, then you use the, uh, the sub SAP functions, because we will see it later on. But when you execute the script, you don't see the GUI, you don't see any anything happening in the GUI. In fact, you don't even have to be logged into the GUI. So you just need to have the GUI installed on your laptop on the, on the machine you are running the script on, but it just talks to SAP directly and there is no screen interaction at all uh, from SAP. So you are sending the data in, you are receiving the data and you, you process that data within Excel. We will see that later. So if you want to, if you need to develop something which is, let's say, would be used more by like a wider audience, uh, then probably sub function is a little bit better because it just hides the underlying SAP magic which is happening in the background. But again, uh, with SAP functions, you are restricted to uh, to the function or actually the RFC enabled function modules in the system, so you can only do what's already. Um, supplied by SAP, or if it's like a specific activity, uh, of course, you can have a custom develop function module to do a specific task, but then that would be an SAP development. To see the programming part of it, I'm just going to click on Alt F11 to bring up the Visual Basic Editor. And um, uh, first of all, let's talk about the, the references or the um, APIs that we are going to use. In Visual Basic, there is a concept of late binding and early binding. Um, I, I prefer to use early binding because then by um, uh, actually naming the, the references that we are going to use, it's, uh, it's easier to write the application because uh, at the, the, uh, the Visual Basic editor can, you know, check for syntax and, uh, and um, uh, it can, you know, show you what let's say, methods or attributes are supported by a particular object, which makes it just a little bit easy, but uh, you can do it either way. So uh, by default, um, any Excel application would have the first four references, and you need to, well, I would be adding a four more for this particular exercise. Uh, the first one is the SAP Remote Function Call Control, which is the, that's the main SAP functions, which is under Program 5 SAP Frontend GUI and WDT functions um, FUNCS uh, dot OCX. The other one is the BAPI control, which is in the same folder, but WDOB up, uh, sorry, WDOBAPI dot OCX. Uh, the table factory, which is WTA, uh, sorry, WT. WDTAOCX.OCX and the logon control, which is in a different folder. So it's under program files, common files, um, SAP shared, and WTDTLog.OCX. So um, the easiest way is to use the browse button and then the browse, browse these four uh, references to your uh, project. It should be added if you download my my script, which is by uh, my example, which is by the way in the video description. Um, so first, I'm just going to declare some variables. I'm going to talk about the variables a little bit later, um, uh, and also I'm going to skip the um, this main sub, which is the table entries RFC. Uh, by the way, when you click on the on the button, that's the table entries RFC method is being called. Um, I do have some two more uh, functions here I'm using throughout the code. The first one is the reset log, which resets the uh, this log tab or basically the entries here, 
the previous log entries and um, the other function uh, which is add log it creates an entry in this log and most of this code is related to the formatting of the um, uh, of the log entry and that's why there are so many lines in the code so it's not that complicated okay that's fine that's that's all about logging um, in in some of the future videos this would become a little bit um, more useful I mean this is a really simple demo so this log is not going to be really uh, extensive let's go back to the code and start talking about this uh, the main main sub or the main function which is that uh, the table entries RFC uh, first I'm just declaring some um, local variables and I'm, I'm setting some defaults so I'm resetting the log and uh, and here in the beginning I'm setting some uh, uh, creating some of the SAP objects. So we need a logon controller functions, a table factory, and the object connection. Uh, and we set the silent logon to false, which we will be using later. So this block here, which I have commented out, can be used if you want Excel to connect to your SAP automatically. If you don't use this, you will see when I run the script, then you will get an SAP pop-up where you need to uh, type in your user ID and password. But um, it is possible to, to put the, you know, the client server, the username, the system ID, all of this automatically and setting the sys silent logon to true and the Excel would log into uh, the SAP automatically. Of course, this would um, uh, this is somewhat risky because then you are storing the password here in the Excel as a, as an open text. So anyone who has access to the Excel file and can go into the Visual Basic Editor can read it. I know that you can password protect it, but um, um, probably the security in, in, in Excel is not the not not absolutely top notch. So use this uh, functionality with caution. Um, if you want to develop an uh, you like a proper application which uh, which does a few things in SAP. Uh, it could be a good idea to set the application uh, cursor to to wait, which basically like you know sets the cursor to the hourglass or that you know wait animation uh, in Windows. Because um, as I said in the beginning, everything which is happening here is going to be happening in the background. You won't see anything on the screen and base, uh, based on you know how quickly your system is, how much time it takes to log on, uh, the, even this a simple process can take like you know 20 if, well 10, 10, 20 seconds. So it's better to tell the, uh, the user that something is happening in the background. Um, okay, next I'm just adding something to the log. Uh, just to say that I'm logging into SAP and I'm calling the logon method of the object connection to say that I want to log on and uh, whether that silent logon is true or false is depending on the, uh, the lines here. But this line actually creates the SAP connection and pops up the logon screen if required. Then after that, we successfully logged into the system. And again, we are setting some other objects like the functions.connection should be equals to the object connection. And uh, in here, we define what the function module uh, is going to be. So this is the function module that we will be calling. And this function module name is exactly the same as what you would type in SC37 in SAP. And next, um, in uh, when you want to run this, so if I want to run the um, want to run this function module, I need to specify the table name I want you know I want information on. So I I need to use the importing parameter. Well, I need to set the importing parameters. And the way you do it in in Excel is you say that uh, uh, f so function or f u n c dot export and then in uh, in brackets and co in double quotes you give the name of the importing parameters so it's table underscore name dot value equals to the actual value and this range table name dot value is going to get the table name from here so you see table name that's the name of the range so by this line base uh, sorry by this line in in uh, visual basic i'm setting the the importing parameters to a particular value. And uh, 
And even though we haven't executed the function yet, we also need to specify what we want to get back from SAP. So um, in this particular example, there are um, an exporting parameter that we are interested in, and there is also a table, we, um, and we want to get the results of this table. So again, a couple of declaration here. So because these are objects, we have to use set. So E, I'm using E for exporting parameters and uh, T for table, and um, I keep the the SAP names in in uppercase. So. Uh, the exporting parameter number of entries equals to function dot import and again um, in double quotes the the name of the exporting parameter so it's funny because you know the SAP function says import but it's actually the export parameter but anyway you just need to remember this and the second one this is how you declare a table is a set t and the name of the table which is entries here equals to function dot tables and again the name of the the SCP table name and um, uh, these variables uh, or actually objects need to have a proper type which are um, declared here in 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 global so the uh, the exporting parameters is a sub functions dot parameter and the entries is the uh, sub table factory control dot table if we would have multiple this, then obviously we would create, need to create multiple variables. But we only have one exporting parameters and one table in this uh, particular uh, case. Uh, next, we issue a um, we add another line to the log, just saying that we are about to execute the call, and function dot call actually executes. So the function dot call uh, is same as clicking clicking execute here on the on the test screen. And um, uh, to be honest, um, I haven't done um, any error handling here, so I'm just assuming that the table name that I'm, I'm, I'm providing to the to this function module is actually a table name which ex exists in uh, SAP. So all I'm doing next is I'm creating a loop uh, on the table. And actually, I can use the uh, the property of this object, which is row count, um, to to tell how many rows exist in this table. And earlier, I mentioned that um, by providing um, by defining the um, uh, you know like the actual object names, like uh, uh, by saying that it is uh, the the T entries is a set table factory control dot table. Um, now. Visual Basic can just tell us what kind of methods and uh, and functions are available as opposed to declaring this as a, as a simple object. So if you want to learn a little bit more about like what this table can do and and what are the different methods that you can access, then you just you know press uh, dot and uh, Visual Basic will give you the code completion. So anyway, um, I say that okay, um, the I created. Um, uh, a loop uh, from one to row count and I'm going to set the cell 9 plus E so it will be you know 10 11 so it's basically here and column 4 so again that's column D and into the, into these cells I'm just going to dump the values T entries I dot one and the reason is is um, what we'll see in debug why um, it is I, sorry, I comma one, and not only I because it's a, it's a two-dimensional di two array. And once this is completed, I'm just uh, uh, okay. So in the uh, this as close is uh, is for the logon. So if the logon wasn't successful, I just say a message that you know you couldn't log into SAP. You need to verify the credentials and. Uh, if this wasn't the case, then yeah, you know, I just do some housekeeping. So I update the timestamp, which is here, and I log off from SAP, add some more, you know, messages, and I reset the application cursor to the default one, and I um, pop up a message saying that the script has completed. So let's see how it looks like in real life. Um, normally, you get the list of systems. But um, I just selected this system and I clicked on uh, default. Um, so normally I'm just getting this uh, uh, pop-up. So I type my password and I click OK. 
and the script completed. So, um, you know, this is not an absolutely complicated um, function module. So even in the test system, it executes in three seconds. It was a slightly bit longer here because we also had to log on, but you'll see the, um, uh, the list of fields in simply dumped into the screen or back into Excel. When I was going through the SAPGUI exercises, then I stressed that it's important that the um, the scripting is enabled in the GUI and also scripting is enabled in SAP or in the uh, in in the SAP instance. And there are similar rules in um, using S S SAP functions. So in here, you are actually executing an RFC call to this function module to the system. So the user you are logging on to SAP needs to have um, RFC access. So if you don't have that, you will get an error message uh, and you can contact BASIS or your security team to, uh, to provide that access to you. And also your, S, uh, your Excel or your computer, which where the Excel is running on, needs to be able to connect to SAP, which doesn't, it's not this, like the same kind of connection like the GUI, because probably it's using different ports, but, um, um, I think this could be the two sources of failure if your code doesn't work for uh, for one reason. So it could be either basis problem uh, with maybe port access, but um, uh, which shouldn't be an issue if you are in the same you know network as the as the SAP server. So let's say if you are in the corporate local network, then it's it wouldn't be a problem. But if if you don't have access otherwise, then it most probably you are missing the RFC access. Next, what I want to talk about is is a little bit of debugging. So um, I'm going to put a um, a breakpoint maybe here uh, at the logon, so we can see what's happening in the system, and I can show you a little bit of debugging in Visual Basic. So I click on um, click on the button. The execution comes here almost immediately because it's it's all about declaration. So if um, by the way, if I'm not really familiar with Visual Basic, then um, uh, by right-clicking here, you can um, um, enable or disable or basically hide or make uh, make the debug window visible. So I use debug window most of the time. You can use the edit as well. Uh, there are a few useful functions here, for example, mass commenting and um, mass unblocking, sorry, uncommenting. Anyway. The um, the step over is this button. So if we step over this one, um, now we are getting the logon screen. So I'm just uh, typing my password in. We logged on, and I mean not much is happening here to be honest. And um, uh, so um, as I said, we need to declare all the things that we want to return from SAP. So we have the number of entries and the entries. Uh, um, as an export parameter as in a table. So if I select this and I say add watch, then at the moment these are yeah, pretty much empty structures because we haven't executed the function yet. So they exist as variables. So if I continue with the um, with debugging and I do the actual call and now we, sh we can see that the E number of entries are now have the value of 103 and if I expand the, the entries here, again, I can see that the row count is 103. You remember we are using the row count here in the, um, in the loop. And um, if I go into the rows and let's say item one and data, and then you can see the, the actual value here, which is basically the concatenated list of the um, the table fields and you can see that the um, this is data you know one comma one and actually you can try the um, uh, within the watch window you can overwrite your variables so you can test how you need to call the um, what you need to type in order to get the data that you want so like okay this is the first line and this is the second line if you would 2.2 then you wouldn't get anything back because it's uh the the entries only have one it, it's a structure or it's a table with only one column um so that would be that would be the debugging in 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 really in a nutshell which is quite useful because um you can see what's coming back so even if you 
for some reason um, you know that you're supposed to have this entry somewhere in the table but you can't find it or you don't know how to reference to it you can just um, you put a breakpoint and then uh, try the different options in debugging I mean that's what uh, I do most of the time and again if you if you would have some structures which, which you don't really understand how it looks like then again you can use the debugging but um, it's going to be unlikely because you can always come back to SC37, do a test run here, and you can see all the you know the structures and the field names and everything here. So that's also a good way to uh, basically figure out how you need to write your code. So I'm just going to let this go because there's not much happening here. I think this should cover the basics of SAP functions. I will be putting up more videos on specific scenarios in the future. If you are interested, Keep an eye on my channel or this playlist in particular. I hope you find this useful and see you in the next video.